Hi, good to see you again. My name is Dr. Alarita. I'm one of the senior uh, ophthalmology residents at McGill University. Uh, thank you for uh, watching the next video in our ophthalmic skills series. Today we're going to be discussing how to take a proper uh, visual acuity and as well uh, how to write your ophthalmic history. Okay, these are two very essential skills that every uh, practitioner should, uh, should nail and should get down quickly. Okay, um, Basically this video is geared towards medical students or elective students who want to get a better grasp on how to do these skills. Uh, you know, as well as a general practitioner who wants to know how to take a proper visual acuity, okay? Um, just before we begin, I just want to throw out a, a few pointers, a few tips. I often get consulted from other services, whether it be neurology or ENT, that ask me, you know, I can't get a visual acuity on my patient. You know, I don't know how to take a vision. I don't have the right equipment. I say, you know, what do you think this is? I mean, obviously it's very easy to take a vision. All you have to do is just take out your uh, smartphone, which most of, most of us have now, and, um, you know, just Google Snell and Acuity chart, okay? And there you go, you have a full chart. You can have the patient uh, cover one eye, have them cover their eye with their hand, and uh, read the chart from top to bottom, and you can see where they land and what their visual acuity is on the, on the, on the, basically on the side. And then have them cover the other eye and do the same thing. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. Anybody can do it anywhere on the fly. So there's really no excuse to at least get a baseline vision. And it helps us as ophthalmologists to better triage and screen when the patient needs to be seen or not. Okay, so please, um, you know, use that uh, little tip for, uh, for your next uh, examination. So, okay, now we're going to move on to how to take a visual acuity in the eye clinic. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So now we're ready to start our visual acuity assessment. So I'm very privileged today to have one of our best medical students, Sumaya here, who's going to be giving us a hand to be the patient for the day. So basically, to begin your exam, one of the most important things is to make sure the patient is properly positioned, okay? So make sure the patient is sitting comfortably in the chair, make sure uh, their back is flat against the exam chair, and that they're sitting at a good height to be able to see the letters, okay? Very important. Um, basically next what you want to do is you just want to make sure that your height is set up properly in the room and your distance is set up properly so basically when we check visual acuity you want to check from 20 feet away or 6 meters that's our standard that's why for example when you see someone say 20-20 what they mean by that is that if a patient can see at 20-20 uh, which we assume is normal vision they can see what the normal population can see at 20 feet they can also see at 20 feet okay uh, versus someone who sees 20 over 100 means that Basically, they have to move up to 20, 20 or 20 feet to be able to see what most people can see at 100 feet further back, which means that their vision is not as good as the normal population. So just keep those things in mind. Make sure the patient's 20 feet away from the uh, screen, and then you can begin your exam. Most of the time in the exam room, there's mirrors that you know get the distance correct, and uh, that way you're ready and you're set up to do a proper examination. Okay. So to begin the exam, what I like to do is I you know, take my uh, handy dandy remote here, and this uh, is used for the digital projector, okay? There's a button on the top which you push, okay? And as I click it, it actually turns the projector on and off, okay? And then you're ready to start your exam once it's on, okay? And then there's multiple other buttons um, that you can go through. We're not gonna go through all the specifics of them, but basically on the right side, there's, um, again, some buttons you push that then will uh, highlight a line of either 2030 or 2025 for the patient to read. And we like to test line by line. So go by a single line is the best way to test visual acuity, okay? So now uh, what we'll do is we'll have uh, the patient uh, properly uh, using the occluder. So let me show you the occluders. There's two types of occluders that we use, okay, for the ophthalmic uh, visual acuity assessment. One is a solid occluder. Okay, and one has little holes in it. Okay, this is for your uh, pinhole test, which we're going to describe later. Okay, so what we have is we basically have the patient hold the occluder. Okay, and you want them to hold it up to their eye. Okay, using the same hand. So if I'm checking my right eye, right hand, I like to cover here on top of my glasses and make sure they cover very well and they look through the other eye. I like to start by the right eye as kind of. Uh, you know, our uh, generic, uh, you know, uh, uh, assessment. So cover your left eye, please. Okay, so here she's covering her left eye and she's looking through the right eye. It's very important that you make sure the patient's not cheating. There's often times when the patient will try to peek through, especially if they don't see very well in the other eye. This is very important in the pediatric uh, exam series and the pediatric uh, ophthalmic exam. Children like to cheat and they're always gonna try to cheat you out. So make sure that they're not peeking, okay? So here, 
Uh, she's peeking a bit, so I'm going to push it just over like that. No peeking, please. Okay? Don't cheat on this exam. And uh, can you see the screen in front of you? Yeah. Perfect. Excellent. So then you're going to check uh, and have her read the line of letters, okay? Once you have her read the line of letters to you, you also can check with the pinhole. So with the pinhole, she takes the other hand, same hand, and holds that against her, okay? And now she's looking through the small, tiny holes of the letters, and you want to see the pinhole should correct for any refractive errors. So she should be able to see better through the small hole, okay? So now I'm going to go through a scenario of checking the visual acuity, all right, in a proper exam setting. Thank you. Okay, now that we have the optimal uh, exam settings, uh, the room is dark, the lights are off, you get a good contrast with the projector screen, you're ready to check for visual acuity. So, we have the patient nicely seated in the, in the exam chair. I like to start my default exam at about 2080 or 2070, and then work my way down to 2020. Once you get to 2020, you can stop, okay? If the patient's baseline vision is worse, you can start at 20 over 100 or 20 over 400, okay? So here we have the projector at 20 over 80. I'll start by having the patient cover their left eye with the solid occluder, please. We're going to start by testing the right eye by default, okay? And so, Sumai, so could you please read the letters from the beginning to the end? Yeah, so C, D, Z, K, V. Very good. Here? R, H, C, S, Z. Great, keep going. C, Z, D, V, K. Very nice. And how about these letters? R, H, K. Can you read the last two for me? No. So she misses the last two. So basically, she sees 20 over 50 minus 2 because she missed the last two letters, okay? Um, or another way you, you can describe it is that she got the three letters on this line. So she has 2060 plus 3, right? Because the line above is 2016, but she got 3 on the line below it. So 2060 plus 3 or 2050 minus 2. You can, uh, you know, your notation can be either one, okay? So it's very important to write that and write it correctly. And uh, now, basically, we're going to try with the pinhole to see if, she, if that can correct for refractive errors. So can you please look through the other occluder of the small holes? Look through any hole and tell me if you see the letters now. Yes. So R-H-K-S-D. Very good. And here? S-V-H-C-Z. Excellent. Keep going. K-O-R-D-H. Very nice. Here? N N V D. Okay. Very good. And see if you can get the last line here. Okay. Try your best. Try your best. O N H K D. Excellent. Good. Good effort. So she got almost all of them except for one or two. So again, 20, 20 minus two. So that concludes the entire exam. Then you want to do it for the other eye, obviously. And uh, it's pretty simple. It's not too difficult. Uh, Anyone can do this visual acuity exam, okay? So let's move, next let's move on to how to take ophthalmic history. Perfect. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, perfect our ophthalmic uh, history, okay? So what do you want to do? You want to start with a blank sheet like this, okay? Make sure the date is written and the patient's identification is clearly at the top, okay? Uh, so what I start with basically is I start with the HPI, right? So right at the top corner, right, HPI, okay? I put them in boxes just to help characterize. You want to then write about the symptoms of the patient. Start with the age of the patient, you know, 78-year-old female, for example, uh, with uh, pain, uh, redness. Uh, you want to write descriptors such as tearing, photophobia, decreased vision, as well as do they have double vision or pain if extra movements. Write everything here, okay? So these are your chief complaints. Next, on the right side, you want to have a whole column here of the past history, okay? So I start right at the top with past ocular history, very important. Okay, POHX with a box around it. And then write, have they had surgery before? Have they had any lasers or injections? Next, you want to write about drops, okay? What drops are they taking, what frequency and what dose? Okay, very important. Um, further on, you want to move, write about past medical history, okay? Do they have a history of diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol? Very important to write all of those as well as do they have any thyroid disease? Next, I want to write about medications. It goes along with it, okay? A lot of times you can just read the list of medications that the patient hands to you, and you'll know what type of medical um, conditions they might have. So write down the medication, dose, and frequency. Finally, you want to write allergies. Very important to know, do they have an allergy to penicillin or to sulfonamide or sulfa? This is important to know because a lot of drops that we use can cross-react with sulfa, for example, diamox or cezolamide. So it's important to know, do they have any allergies to sulfa or penicillin, okay? And write the allergies here. 
Finally, write the family history here, okay? So do they have any family history of any eye disease? Do they have glaucoma in the family? Do they have any uh, family members with problems with the retina, retinal detachment, retinal diseases, or any family member who's lost their vision at a young age? Important to know for retinotysa pigmentosa, for example, okay? So write everything here. So next, we're gonna move on to the exam, okay? So what I like to write for exam, you write OE for on exam, okay? Start by writing V, okay, P, and T. Very important, vision, pupil, and T for tonometry, okay? So for vision, you want to write SC or CC on top, which is with correction or without correction, okay? And um, by default notation, we always write right eye before left eye. So you can write, for example, uh, here, let's say in the right eye, they saw 20-20, and the left eye, they saw 20 over 30, okay? So write that right and left eye. Again, you want to check for pinhole tests. So uh, just like in the previous video, write pinhole. So I write, I write an arrow and I write pH for pinhole. And I write what is the corrected vision with pinholes. For example, 20 over 20, you know, with the pinhole. If they miss 2, you can write 20, 20 minus 2, for example, at pinhole. Okay? So write the notation like that. Next, for pupils, you want to check uh, pupil exam, both eyes. So write, uh, for example, no RAPD, okay, relative afferent pupillary defect in both eyes, OU, okay, and also you can write pearl, okay, if you want to check for pupils are round and reactive to light, okay. Finally, for tonometry, you want to write how did you take the pressure in the eye? Was it by tonal pen, T O N O, or by tonal application, T A, okay, and then of course you want to write the pressure right before left, so let's say the pressure was 12 in the right eye and 10 in the left eye, okay? Very important. Sometimes we like to write 95% just to know that it was accurate when you took the um, basically pressure in the eye, okay? So then what we like to do, we like to move on to extraocular movements and computational visual fields. So for extraocular movements, I like to write EOM, extraocular movements, and I tend to uh, check the six cardinal gaze. So write an X is the line through that. And then check the six cardinal um, uh, gaze uh, locations, okay? Zero is, means that they had a full uh, range of uh, extraocular movements in that area. Um, and then you can write from minus one to minus three, uh, being a limitation in gaze. Minus one, very mild limitation up to minus three where they're completely limited in that gaze. And then you can also write, like for example, zero to plus three, where plus three means that it was an overshoot in that direction, okay, for example, in, in, in patients who have different types of strabismus. Okay, so write that for the right eye and the left eye. Here's the right eye and here's the left eye, okay? Next, you want to write computational visual fields, you know, VFL, visual field. And for this, I draw two crosses like this, okay? And you want to check the four quadrants of vision, okay? And, and both eyes, covering both eyes, all right? And basically, what they see in that quadrant, you write an arrow for when they can see correctly in that quadrant of vision. Um, if they can't see, you write you know, lines like this, you dark and out one quadrant. That means they couldn't see in that uh, quadrant of vision. And the thing with visual fields, be very important. The notation is different than the rest of the exam. It's actually left before right. It's what the patient sees, okay? So here's your OS left and here's OD for right. It's what the patient can see, okay? So very important to do that, visual fields and extraocular movements. So next we're going to move on to your slint lab exam, SLE. For a slim exam, I like to draw a picture of the eye, okay, of the anterior surface of the eye. So I draw it like this, okay, with a circle in the middle. All right, and basically you have your conge and sclera here. Here's your cornea and your pupil, okay, and then basically you can also draw your eyelids as little arrows like this, okay, those are your eyelids, upper and lower eyelids, okay. Beside it, you can write uh, all the different structures of the eye, be very systematic, so starting from outside in again lid lacrimal lashes, okay, SC for sclera, okay, conjunctiva, C-O-N-J, cornea is of a K, okay, anterior chamber, iris, and lens. And then comment on each system, so, you know, lid lacrimal lashes, is it normal, sclera, is it clear, normal, conjunctiva, is it clear, or is there any fluorescein staining, cornea, is it clear, anterior chamber, deep and quiet, okay, quiet means there's no cells, uh, and that the anterior chamber is deep. Iris, you know, what is the pupil? Is it round? Um, is there any, basically, abnormalities of the pupil? And especially the lens. Is the lens, is there a nucleosclerotic cataract? Or is there a posterior chamber IOL, interocular lens? Write it down here, okay? So just write down what your findings are. And watch our previous videos on the SLINAP exam to get a good um, grasp of how to do a proper SLINAP exam and how to properly examine all the structures from outside in. You can also write on this side, for example, I like to write K for cornea clear with a little arrow to the cornea and anterior chamber 
D and Q, deep and quiet, okay? So there's how you do your enter statement exam. Finally, if you want to do, you know, for an extra bonus point, if you want to do a more thorough or, you know, full exam, you can do the dilated fundus exam, DFE, okay? For this exam, you know, you're going to draw the right and the left eye uh, circle here. There's the optic nerve, and then you have your vascular arcades and your macula in the center. And we like to, we like to write M, V, N, D for macula vessels and disc. Macula, you want to talk about what is the foveal reflex, okay? Uh, as well as any edema of the macula. The vessels, you want to say, are the vessels normal or any abnormality of the vessels? And the retina, the D is for disc, so the optic nerve, the disc. Uh, is there any pallor or edema of the disc? What is the cup to disc ratio? Very important to notate everything, you know, so for example, 0.2 for cup to disc ratio. So write all your findings there if you're doing a dilated fundus exam, okay? Finally, the last part of the exam is your impression, okay? IMP, all right, and your plan, okay? So for impression, I like to number one, for example, what is your impression? Let's say the patient had a corneal abrasion. You write corneal abrasion, right eye, okay? And then your plan is what's your treatment, okay? Your plan is, for example, uh, you're going to start with antibiotic drops, Vigamox, four times a day in the right eye. So write that down. And then two could be, you know, follow-up, follow-up in one week, okay? So write that nice and clear. And very important to leave enough, enough space, unlike what I did, unfortunately, leave a little more space than I did to write impression and plan nice and clearly so that the next examiner or that the consulting physician understands what is going on and what your impression is and what the plan is for the patient, okay? And so you want to communicate that nice and clearly. And, you know, as a medical student or elective student, you know, do your best to come up with a differential of what you think is going on. And, you know, take a, take a jab at the impression and plan. Do your best and, and uh, write down what you think is, uh, is happening. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, as you're a learner, that's a time when you want to uh, make mistakes, uh, and that's the best time to learn. So if you make a mistake at that time, don't worry. We have residents like ourselves or uh, staff physicians who are there to help and to help with your learning. So try your impression, try your plan, do your best, and finally, you know, sign off on your um, consult, and that's it. You're you're all done. So now you've uh, mastered the uh, ophthalmic history, and you should be good to go for any elective or uh, any time spent in the eye clinic. So. I hope that helps and good luck. Ciao. Saving eyes and saving lives.